Hindsight is 2020, and today we're going to go through a couple things that would have been real nice to know a couple months back when I first started the home buying process. What's up you guys, my name is Antoine and welcome to my channel. And if you're new to the channel, I like to cover topics like personal finance, investing, as well as lifelong learning, like this video. And if that sounds good to you, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. So the reason why I kind of dove headfirst into real estate is because, you know, I've read a ton of books and I've listened to a ton of podcasts, but I feel like in order to get good at something, you have to actually do it, right? And like, this is like a comparison of like, if you read every single book, on how to shoot a basketball, like your jumper is not going to be good until you go out there and actually practice shooting a basketball. So that's kind of why, you know, I decided to buy investment property and kind of go through it just to learn more. So recently I bought my first investment property. <laughs> to give you guys some background, the property's in Montgomery, Alabama. And I'm based in Chicago, Illinois. So I know what you might be thinking. Out of state investing as your first investment, that's pretty bold. However, the reason why I bought a property there is because my girlfriend Madison is doing her master's at Alabama State University. And I thought this would be a good way to have her house hack while she was there. And I also felt that this would be a great opportunity to learn hands-on about real estate with limited risk and learn more about property management, as well as you know all the tax benefits that are associated with home ownership. Basically, we're doing real estate with training. So the home is a three bed, two bath, and Madison's currently my on-site property manager. And she stays in the master bedroom and she lives with two of her roommates that are also in her program who will be leasing until they graduate, so about two years. And because this is a house hack, the property itself is only cash flowing about $200 a month, as opposed to the regular amount, which would be about $600 a month. And if you're interested in how I made an offer and how I was able to analyze all that, be sure to fill out the Google form in the description, and I'll be sure to send you my spreadsheets as well as all the things I use to analyze the property in order to get it to cash flow positive. So now that you guys have a better understanding of my first investment property, we can go into kind of what would have been nice to know earlier this year. Right now, interest rates are super low for a home. We were able to lock in a 2.9%, and when you factor in the 2% inflation, we're borrowing some real cheap money here. And with that, there are more people that are buying homes to take advantage of these low interest rates, as well as people who are refinancing. And because of this, the underwriters, the people who are supposed to assess the risk of every person who's looking to get money lent to them, are super backed up. We had our offer accepted on the property in about mid-June, and we thought we gave ourselves enough time to be able to be all closed out and ready to go by mid-July. So that way Madison would be ready for school come mid-August. But the underwriters were so backed up that we weren't able to close until mid-August. And we had to work something out with the seller directly in order for them to be able to move in. But the lesson there was that you have to evaluate all parts of the home buying process. And if things like, you know, really low interest rates back up the underwriters and you have to factor that in into your timeline. Also to make sure that your deadlines are communicated to the seller in case you need to work something out with them. What we worked out with our seller was very last minute and it was very stressful to get it all kind of figured out since they needed to move in since their school was about to start. And I feel like this whole thing could have been avoided if our agent made sure the seller knew our due dates as well as had a better idea of our situation. The other takeaway from the home buying process is definitely bet your lender as well as your agent. Since I was investing out of state, I just kind of went with the flow and I went with whatever Zillow gave me. And we had a lot of communication issues as well as deadlines that just weren't being met. As well as our lender deciding to go with a new investor who had great rates, but had no sense of urgency, which really elongated our process. And we ended up getting the short end of the stick on that one. The last thing is to make sure that you switch over all of your utilities around the end of closing time. That way it's seamless for you and your tenants and no one has to pay same day setup fees or go without any hot water. So being on top of that definitely would have saved me some headache and some money up front. All in all, these are some lessons that I learned going through the home buying process. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button down below to help me help the YouTube algorithm push this video. And I'll be sure to make more videos like this as I expand my real estate portfolio and learn more about property management. And if you're interested in learning more about the home buying process, I've already made a video on that and I'll link it in the description below. So thanks for watching guys. Comment below if you have any lessons learned from your home buying process and I'll see you guys in the next one.